I was so helpless seeing my mom go through her chemotherapy and her bouts with cancer growing up. I saw my dad get taken away because of his lung cancer and going through the hardships of being a teenager and seeing your family just succumb to these medical diseases. Did that make me want to go into medicine? Oh, you bet. Was it also because my parents were, that's kind of what they knew because their parents also knew the same? Yes. Does that make them wrong for that? No. Do I get to choose differently? Yes. I know what I'm capable of. I know I'm so meant for more. I know that I'm good at these things, but what am I great at? And the answers will probably surprise you. What is the kind of life that you wanna live? What is the kind of life that you wanna lead? Is it freedom? Is it the fact that you get to choose? That you get to be in the driver's seat? That is my question. This is absolutely for you. This is where you get to choose you get to be the main character in your story. What is that energy that you're going to bring? Hey loves, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe or follow button wherever you are tuning into this. It helps grow the show more than you know. Thank you so much again and enjoy. We are braving all things our dharma, our soul's purpose. But first I wanted to select our card or that suck now what affirmation cards for our episode today. And here is, okay, here's what I have. I allow myself to embrace and celebrate each win, no matter how big or small, I am celebrating me. And I wanna just pop that up there if you are watching this on YouTube. If this is the first time you're coming across these questions about what are you here for? What are you here on this planet for? And this came up so much for me when I was going through some of my biggest challenges in my life. And one of which, one of my big dark nights of the soul, I've, I've spoke about this at length in some of my other podcast episodes, it has been the my first marriage and almost kind of the the death and destruction of a dream, the death and destruction of a what if, the de death and destruction and kind of a mourning of who that person was. Now it was timed at a time where I was also going through my Saturn return. It was the end of my 20s into uh, full into kind of my 30th year. And it was a big awakening. And as we've been kind of going through some of the teachings from astrology, and you know, I've been kind of an in the closet astrology lover for many, many years. And we've just had some profound guests on the podcast. I'll link some of that in the show notes as well. I wanted to really bring up how do we know we're actually following our purpose? And in Vedic teachings or even in Ayurveda, the one of the oldest sciences, we talk about dharma as one soul's purpose. And the Japanese have another term for it. It's called ikigai, the intersection of what you are meant to do to have a meaningful life, along with the contribution that you want to make, along with the gifts that you have. And it's a beautiful intersection of what drives our purpose. And some argue our purpose can come from our passions. Some argue that's foolish and it should come from the gifts, the things that you are good at. And some argue that it may come from something that you've lived through or been through. And or it may come from something that comes completely natural to you and you have just taken it for granted. You don't even know it's there. And I want to bring this up because there was a, there was something that I was at not too long ago this past summer where you're seeing family, you are at a family party and, you know, the people there are talking about what their children do and people are introducing themselves. And I don't typically go to family events and things like that. I wanted to honor this, this family and they first were lauding people on what they did in the world and their professions and and where they went to school and so on and so forth. And 
you know, growing up in a Filipino Indian household where the career choices were doctor, dentist, lawyer, engineer. Well, for me, I became a cosmetic dentist, not just a general dentist, but a cosmetic dentist. And it was ingrained in us from a very small age that we were, that education was not only a privilege, it was a birthright. And not only that, success, accolades, achievements, awards, et cetera, was how you gain validation in life. It's how you're going to gain the validation from your aunties, uncles, lolas, titos, titas, aunties, you name it, right? That's how you will get conditional love, conditional love. And I meet young people now who, and it could be family friends, that struggle so hard in trying to figure out what kind of career is for them. And I get questions in the DMs, Neither, how do I know I'm living my dharma? How do I know that I'm living on purpose? Well, I'll tell you right now how people choose. They think they know their dharma. However, life tends to happen and they tend to, it tends to unravel in the most beautiful, glorious ways. Sometimes it could be through a breakup, a painful breakup, divorce. Sometimes it could be through a betrayal, a friendship betrayal or you are working in a company and someone slanders you another betrayal and you think is is there more to life than this is there more to life than this pain that i'm going through or the pain that i'm going through is so big and so thick and so cloudy that i cannot even see through well that is the universe giving you a sign it's giving you a red flag sign to say hey wake up wake up. There is something on the other side of this. It is so painful right now, but I guarantee you, I promise you, I promise you it'll get better on the other side. You just have to go through it. You have to, you can't avoid it. You can't bypass it. You have to go through the suck. You have to go through the pain. You have to go through the hero's journey or the heroine's journey and trek through it. And my husband, he was, he had this big event. He was training on and off for what, you know, he, he told us the entire family that he was going to be climbing this mountain, the equivalent of Mount Everest. And he had never done you know, a physical fitness challenge before. This was something that he wanted to do with his childhood buddies. And I was like, yep, you go, boo, go, go do you know, and I, I've been doing challenges like this for, for years, challenging my body in different ways has always been such a gift for me and, and part of my dharma. It's one of the ways that I am able to come back to myself. It's one of the ways that I am able to just really find my essence and my, my core of doing hard things and, and challenging my body, mind, spirit in, in all of those ways. And I was so excited that my husband decided on his own with uh, the help of one of our really close friends that he was going to do this particular climb. And it was going to be, the terrain was going to be rugged. They had to, you know, have all of these, like the hiking sticks and the, the shoes and everything like that. And that they were going to be camping. And meanwhile, they haven't done any of this before. And it was really all about endurance. Well, when he got there, it was a completely new ball game for him. He had never been exposed to this before. And it was going to, this. the, the race was a full race. It was a 36 hours. And the mountain, they had to climb the equivalent of Mount Everest in 36 hours. The mountain opened up at 6 a.m. And so they had to do this climb 13 times to completely finish. And not only that, people would could sleep if they wanted to. And they had to bring up all of the gear. And it was a two-mile ascend upwards. And if you've never climbed a mountain before... It comes with all of the things that we need in order to challenge not only our mind, body, and spirit. And as we know, and as we heard the sayings, when you opt to climb a mountain, it can break you. It can test your mental, emotional resiliency. And you may come across hurdles that will make you question things. Am I supposed to be doing this? Is this really what I signed up for? 
why, why am I doing this? Why, why did I sign up for it? And so my husband was going through all of this and immediately was like, I don't think I trained as much as I thought I was supposed to train. Like this wasn't a flat walk. This was legit going up a mountain and then doing this 13 times. And so he ended up finishing to his result. He finished eight climbs and that was huge. That was huge for him. He had multiple different breakthroughs and a lot of it was the beliefs that he had about fitness growing up. His parents were from India and they, my in-laws, they were told that we've got to keep safe. Safety is huge. We're not going to stress our bodies. We're not going to do anything that's harmful because if we do, we may get hurt. And so that was what he was always told. So be safe, stay in the container, et cetera, and so on and so forth. And then he meets me where I'm like the complete opposite. And so that has been, it, it's been a beautiful relationship to see the way that we come together in many ways and support each other. And, you know, during the, those breaking points of when he was about to give up, he, you know, I was on the phone and, um, he's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have it in me. And so I asked him, what, what is your Dharma in this stage? Cause he's turning 40 and you know, what, what is it? Who is the person that you're becoming and who is that person? Because you're right. Your knees, your shin splints could be hurting right now. Your feet could be giving out. Your mind is definitely going to say why and question everything. And it doesn't matter if you finish or not. I'm going to love you either way. And who are you becoming? And what is that? What is drawing you to the finish line? And he said, I want to break what my parents told me to pave the way for our kids so they can do hard things. And I said, all right, that's, that's it. That's it. Wh whatever that is. And so he took that with him and he was able to finish the two extra climbs that he did to finish at eight. And he said, I'm complete. I feel like I've, I, I reached all of the things that I wanted to learn of being able to expand my capacity, my, my body to see what, what I am capable of. And when we are questioning ourselves in who we are becoming, we have to be okay with the noise that some people may not agree, that some people may question, that the party that I was at where people didn't know how to place me, this auntie and uncle didn't know what to say or how to introduce me because I was no longer a dentist, although that's what they led with because that's all they know. And people's perception of you, because many times when people find me or find this work or find this topic, it becomes really heated because our family, our lineage wants us to get married at a certain age, wants us to have children at a certain age, wants us to settle down at a certain age, wants us to reach quote unquote, whatever level of success that they deem worthy and successful because their parents thought that for them. And then the parents before them thought that for them. So this has been passed down from generation to generation. And then when young people come to me and say, why did you leave dentistry? Why did you spend all that time going to school? Why did you start your own business and then decide that wasn't for you? And wherever you are at and whatever season you are at in your journey, embrace it. If you are just getting out of school and you are getting that first taste of a role or a job, or you realize that you're like, man, what I went to school for, I don't know if I want to pursue that thing because we are so lucky that we are living in a time for the first time ever in the history of our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents, that we are inventing new careers every single day, every single day that we are in this vortex of creation, that we are in the highest possibility of our most creative pursuits. And 
that means because we are not able to, we're, we're not, we're not struggling. Our parents did that. Our grandparents did that. They came to a different country. They came and assimilated in a different culture, in a different culture, in a different language. They paved that way. So what their hardships were, maybe your hardships are going to be less than that. The, the, the fact that they had to go and work the same job for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years and they loved it and they, they lauded in it, you may not need to do and you may not want to do. You may not, you may have the privilege to choose. So are you going to choose wisely based on the fact that you get validated because you've been getting validated for your dance competitions or the fact that you have this many trophies or this many awards or this many medals in your back closet? Or are you going to change the narrative? Are you going to shift and change to say, what do I want? What's really lighting me up here in my heart, in my soul? What am I meant to be teaching or doing or providing or showing? Who am I showing up for? What is lighting me up? This is the question that I get asked so much at High Self Institute. It's our school where we've certified over 2,000 students at this point, or at least close to. And it was a dream to be able to merge my greatest gifts of gab, but also helping people come into that center for themselves, helping people reject all of the noise outside, reject all of the judgment, reject the fact that they weren't going to be in a certain career for a period of time because they've come home to themselves. And I'm so excited that every year we we launch our certification twice a year. And every year we have this incredible invitation to invite you into the next chapter of your life of you figuring out what your soul's purpose is. And if you are in a career right now that is, maybe you're, you're so good at it. You are so good at it. And you're like, I've been doing this. I've been doing this for a while. I can do this in my sleep. Yeah, it pays the bills. Is it exciting me? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Nita, how do I know if I'm living my soul's purpose? Well, what is the kind of life that you wanna live? What is the kind of life that you wanna lead What's the kind of life that you desire? What is it? Is it freedom? Is it sovereignty? Is it the fact that you get to choose, that you get to be in the driver's seat? Is it the fact that you want autonomy? Or is it the fact that you want to be striving for your own passions and advocating for your own activism in whatever that feels like for you. Never before have we been in a space and in time where the number of careers that we can create, the amount of value exchange that we can create in the world looks so different than what our parents were doing. And many times, family friends, family members, whenever I go back, they're like, I don't even know what she's doing these days. I, I can't even say, but am I living on Dharma? Am I living in my highest purpose? Am I helping people step into the next and highest version of themselves? Am I helping you to ask a more brave question? We have had people from 60 different countries at this point come into the doors of Highest Self Institute, which I've co-founded with my amazing co-partner, co-pilot, Sahara Rose. And the reason why we came together was we saw a need. We saw a need from people that looked like us that wanted to do something completely different, but didn't know how. 
they weren't on this linear path for success. They weren't on this linear path of, well, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go get a job. I'm going to go and follow in my parents' footsteps in their careers, or I'm going to go become a doctor, dentist, lawyer, engineer, what I did. And it's not the fact that I didn't love dentistry. I loved it until I woke up, until I realized, oh, wait, is there a different way to do this? Am I only going to be in the confines of these four walls? I mean, I'm kind of in a studio right now recording, but I get to do it on my time. And while I was obsessed, I was obsessed with transforming people's smiles. I was obsessed with building their confidence. I just didn't know that there was another way to do it. And so if you are like, well, I think I like what I'm doing, but how do I really know? And some of you who are in medicine, who are uh, in professional careers, you're like, well, don't knock it. I'm not knocking it. I'm actually allowing you to introspect with me for a second, play with me for a second. Who are you actually doing this for? Because our parents only knew what they knew. And there's, it's not good or bad. It's just, it's, it's, it's what they were presented with. It's a lot of times why I see the dance moms trying to push their kids into dance because they had their failed dreams about being a dancer. Or the fact that when I go to tennis classes, I see some of the eager beaver parents just like at the, you know, at the fence and they're pushing their kid because maybe they had dreams of going to Wimbledon one day. So, and it's not a judgment. It's, it's how we are motivated and what motivated our parents or what was very exciting for them. And I know that for a period of time, because I saw my parents succumb to medical diseases, I saw my brother instantly go in a flash after having a, an asthma attack. And I was so helpless. I was so helpless seeing my mom go through her chemotherapy and her bouts with cancer growing up. I saw my dad get taken away because of his lung cancer and going through the, the hardships of being a teenager and seeing your family just succumb to these medical diseases. Did that make me want to go into medicine? Oh, you bet. Was it also because my parents were, that's, that's kind of what they knew because their parents also knew the same? Yes. Does that make them wrong for that? No. Do I get to choose differently? Yes. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for all of the teachings that I learned when I was in my professional doctorate school and all of the people that I met and all of the learning lessons that I had during that time. And even when I had my practice and in private practice and the fact that you learn so much. So I'm not throwing any of that away. In fact, that's made me uh, an extraordinary entrepreneur. And to be able to get those skill sets and to transfer them into other industries. And so if this is you, if you are like, but I just want something more. If you are curious, you're at an intersection in life where you're like, all right, now what? Now what? What's my, what's my next calling? If you had a that sucked period and now you're asking a different question and you're like, okay, I know what I'm capable of and I know I meant for more. I know I'm so meant for more. I know that I'm good at these things, but what am I great at? And the answers will probably surprise you. One of the reasons why Sahar and I, we created High Self Institute and more importantly, Dharma coaching, the Dharma coaching program, our first ever sole purpose six month container where we teach you how to be a sole purpose coach, where we teach you how to help others step into their dharma. But in order to do that, you have to step into your own. So we have two camps. We have people who come into this work because 
maybe they are a coach, maybe they are an entrepreneur, maybe they are a leader, maybe they are in corporate, maybe they are a startup founder, maybe they are a leader of their own lives, maybe they are a leader in their homes, maybe they have uh, been uh, conditioned as a child of immigrants to think a certain way, to do a certain way, to act a certain way, and now they want to break free from all of that. Now they're waking up. Now they're like, okay, I am shushing the outside noise. I'm shushing what my parents' friends think and the aunties and uncles think and the titas and the lolas think of what I should do because, man, that's not really me. That's not really me. That was me like back in the day, but that's not me now. Or you're craving an authentic space to be around like-minded people, not folks who maybe judge you behind closed doors, not folks who think they're better than, than you because they went to a certain Ivy League school or they're doing a certain career or their parents talk in that way. We all know and we all have people in our lives who are like that. God bless them, but they're just following their own parents' dreams of who they should have been. And there's nothing wrong about that, but we get to change it. We get to shift it and we get to act with kindness and we get to kill with kindness. We get to provide a space where our vibration is so high that they are like, whoa, you are living in your truest essence. Like, what are you doing? Where it doesn't even matter anymore. They can say you're doing whatever, but you are living a life on purpose. You are living a life that you truly love because you are also igniting that path for other people. You are also pulling the veil and you're saying, actually, I don't need to get married at 30. Actually, no, I don't need to have a child by 32. I don't need to have seven figures by the time I'm 33. I don't need to do all of that. What is a what is an abundant, soul-fueled purposeful and meaningful life look like when it's on my terms. When I have the freedom, when I have the abundance to choose, when I have the freedom to wake up and I have rich relationships, people who are cheering me on, championing me on to become the best version of myself. When I've healed all of my past doubts and my worries and my imposter syndrome and the fear that what am I supposed to be doing? The question we get you to ask in High Self Institute, in our six-month container of being able to step into your dharma, being able to honor your truth, being able to ask yourself, is this person really right for me or, or am I deserving of a more beautiful, incredible, amazing relationship? Maybe it's with somebody, but maybe it's with myself. Maybe it's creating a network of incredible solid humans that is going to support my next journey of who I am becoming. I don't know who that person is yet, but I want to fall in love with that person. If that's you, I would love to invite you in the most special, most expansive, most incredible six months that will forever change your life. And that is to become a soul purpose coach. And whether you are already the way shower in your friend group, whether you are already the leader and the inspirer or the motivator of your friend group, or you are the cheerleader and people come to you for advice, people come to you because you are just so positive. You're a beacon of light in an area where people constantly judge themselves. They're constantly talking bad about themselves. They're constantly comparing themselves to other people, comparing themselves, oh, I should be there now. No, you're exactly where you need to be. You're exactly where you need to be. And it's here. It's, it's, it's right now. How do you know you are ready for that change? Well, if this is lighting you up, if this is like, wow, I've never thought about that before. I've never thought about what are my gifts? What, who am I meant to serve? Because we go through nine different archetypes. And Zahara has got this beautiful, not only diagram, but we go through the different kinds of archetypes of people and how they are meant to serve. And maybe some of you have lived through an experience. Maybe you were like me and you went into a particular career because you saw a parent go through a certain medical challenge. Or maybe you were diagnosed with something. And that became your purpose to help other people thrive. It's one of the reasons why I started my nonprofit years ago. 
because I wanted to help young girls build their self-confidence so that when they got into a relationship, they know that they were the most juiciest, most amazing human ever first before getting into partnership with somebody else. And my dharma has had various iterations of what it looks like. When I realized and when I woke up to the fact that, oh my gosh, my gifts are the gifts of helping people become seen, heard, and understood. I help people see the light in themselves. I've always done that. I've always been the bringer of community. I've always been the sparker of joy. Even when I was in grade school, even when I was in high school, even when I was going through my very, very hard times of loss, I still showed up with a smile on my face. I still was the one organizing things because I was such a lover of humans and community that I now get to do this on a grand scale, bring all of you together and we get to teach you how to do this in your own circle so you get to t create ripple effects in your own life. So you get to take this and you get to spark the joy and illuminate the light in your family, in your, in your homes, in your organizations, in your workforce. We have people who are not only professionals, who are not only doctors, who are not only leaving the health profession, who are not only early grads or early retirees or loving this because it's like, oh my gosh, I found my people that they're coming into the six month container and it's finally open. We have our early bird that is from now until September 7th. So you get 500 off tuition. If you decide you want to enroll or if you're curious about it, I will link in the show notes where you can get hold of this information and to see if this is right for you, to see if what it looks like to step into your dharma. How do you know you're living your dharma? How do you know that it's probably time for a career change? How do you know you're living on purpose? What does it look like to actually live and thrive? Because if you believe you're meant for more, if you are believing that you are meant to live an extraordinary life, life on your terms, a meaningful life with meaningful relationships, meaningful friendships, meaningful work that you get to do, to help others step into their truest calling. And maybe you're like, well, Nita, I don't know if I want to be a sole purpose coach. Can I use this for my own personal growth and development? 1000%. It's one of the reasons why we created this. We created this because the first three months, what you're doing is you are learning all about you. You're learning about the Dharma blueprint. You're learning about the spiral. You're learning about all of these tools to help you get closer to the highest version of yourself so that you can be a better communicator, so that you can unleash what's always been on your mind, but maybe you're afraid of speaking out of turn. Maybe you're afraid of fully expressing yourself. Maybe you're afraid of cursing out loud because for fear of somebody judging you. Screw all of that shit. That goes out of the window when you're fully embodying your truth, when you're fully embodying your dharma. And I recognize this so much. Like it was like a fire that lit under my belly when not only did I walk away from a toxic relationship, but I found myself again. And the way that I found myself was I let go of what people were saying about me getting divorced, you know, divorce is taboo in our culture. I had family members who stopped talking to me. I started to question, is there more than this? Is there more than this dental office? Is there more than this town where I was living, where I was seeing patients? Is there more than this clinic? Is there more than this profession? And so I started going outside of the profession, whether it was conferences I started taking up different kinds of activities to find out what lit me up, to find out what my gifts were. Because I didn't believe that my gifts were so easy that, oh yeah, this is what I do. This is what I've always done. Now I just transform people from the 
inside out. And this is where you can too. If you've been a way shower of your friends, if you've been somebody that is constantly giving advice, if you love to be the one others count on, if you're already giving counsel in some ways to your family, to your friend groups, in your work office setting, if you are the inspirer, the igniter, the motivator, or if you are feeling depleted, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling like you're in an intersection of life where you're like, I feel like I'm meant for more, I just don't know what. There's two ways to take our program. One is you can sign up and you can be a student. As a someone who, like me, over a decade ago, I wish I had something like this. I wish I had this program that allowed me to not only step into the highest version of myself, but to be around other like-minded people that are from all different walks of life that totally get it, that get that they're leaving the dogma of their friend groups or the fact that you need to have a white picket fence, a dog, a family, and a partner by the time you're 30 or 35 or whatever, or the fact that you need to have it all figured out by a certain time. Screw that. And if you are in your 40s or if you are going through and you're, you're saying, okay, I, I've got the kids, I've got the family, they're in school, I don't know, what, what am I supposed to do? This is also for you. This is your invitation to reignite and reinvent yourself. I'm known as the queen of reinvention. And the fact that we can do and question, what are we braving next in the next era of our lives? What are you braving in the next era? What is your main character energy going to be like? What is your glow up going to look like when you say yes to you? That is my question. So yes, for the mamas in the room, this is absolutely for you. This is where you get to choose. You get to be the main character in your story. What is that energy that you're going to bring? This is so good and so juicy, and I invite you to come on a journey with us. I will link everything in the show notes. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and until next time on The Brave Table. 